Welcome to the integration video for Redline devices. My name is Chris. I'm working for Software G as an ecosystem manager, and um, I'm happy to introduce Stefan uh, from Redline, working as an application field engineer. And today we've prepared a little demo how Cumulosity IoT can work together with Flex Edge devices from Redline. And um, yeah, Stefan, can you? Tell us a little bit more about the setup that we are trying to connect today with Cumulosity IoT. Yeah, thank you, Christian, to, to let me opportunity to, to show uh, how to integrate uh, Cumulosity in, in a Red Lion solution. Uh, yeah, today what I've planned to, to show you is uh, how easy it is to, for this example, connect, uh, yeah, in this case it is, uh, the solar panel, so a sensor to our device and then to push this data to the community cloud. So for this demo, uh, we have here a panel meter, which is a Modbus RTU device. I know uh, the Modbus address of the value that I want to, to get uh, to, to, to push on community. And now perhaps the easiest way is to show you in the software. So when you you are using uh, our software, uh, Crimson from Red Lion, first thing you will have to do will be simply to go to the integrated connectors, choose the one from Cumulosity. And, and it's then, always coming with with the device itself, right? You don't have to install that separately. It's always part of the Crimson framework, as understood. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly, Christian. It's a, it's a part of the of the Crimson software, and it is available in uh, in all Red Lion devices that you, could, you you can find. In fact, so when you have to set up these uh, these connectors uh, for Cumulosity, it is really the easiest way. You simply have to provide there the URL of your tenant. You will give a name to your device. You will give a device ID, and that's all. The, the, the other part of the, the, the job will be done uh, really quickly also uh, on Cumulosity side. As I explained, I want to, yes, to, to, to have uh, my sensor information in Cumulosity. So, Next step is simply to go through my communication to select from which device I want to get this information. In this case, it will be on a serial Modbus master. My device has a drop number one, okay, and his name is PM50. So I go to my tag database. I've prepared in advance a little bit, yeah. So I have created a folder for PM50 object and my analog value, as I explained before, the source is from my PM50 and the Modbus register is the first one. So as soon as I have done that, uh, I simply have to go to communication. Again, Cumulosity. There, normally everything is fine, and I have possibility to have up to 30 tag set. And for each tag set, I simply have to decide the way I will push data. For example, in this tag set, it will be periodic every second. And select from my tag database objects that I want to push on Cumulosity. Uh, for example, another tag set, I will select an array of value and decide to push the data, not uh, in this case in periodic mode, but triggered by an external tags in my application. Uh, for example, you have a production batch, uh, it's finished, and so you want to record the data. So that really gives you a lot of flexibility to have a yeah, very granular 
rule set which data to feed in Cumulosity and also um, reducing the traffic because you're just pushing the delta in some cases and you can uh, create up to, I think you said 30 different tax heads, right? So you can have really exactly. a lot of different groups that are differently configured, uh, comprised of different measurements and you shouldn't be limited by this um, yeah, number of tag sets, which I found quite impressive uh, to be used. And um, so let's, yeah, let's look at what needs to be done to get the data to Cumulosity next. Next step, as I explained, will be in fact in your Cumulosity account. Uh, I, yes, I have started uh, this session. I'm going to device management. For the moment, I have three devices defined. So I want simply to add the new one, which will be called EA50. So I ask for a single registration. I put my device ID. You remember it is the one that I put this place, this device ID. I can assign for example, to a group. And then simply have to wait for my device to ask to a registration. So it, it can it can take a, a little bit time because uh, in fact he is trying every 10 seconds uh, for 10 seconds after he's waiting 20 seconds and 30 seconds and two minutes in order not to 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 have too much traffic during this uh, registration phase. So I can accept now. So normally I should have the same information for my side. So it is a small web page uh, available uh, and I can see that data are published and I have information regarding my credential to, to be sure that it's thing is fine. And perhaps now, can I, can, can you, can I uh, let you, Christian, a little bit uh, guide me through, through Cumulosity? Yeah, sure. Um, so if you click on the device entry on the Flex, uh, Flex Edge DA50A entry, uh, we can surely investigate how the device looks like. We see an overview about uh, the device status, some measurement information in the communication tab. And we also have within the device data section an overview about the device name, the type. And if you scroll down, you would see the firmware version, hardware information. So really a um, detailed description of the device itself. And when you hop into the next tab, the measurements section on the left side, we can see the value that you previously configured. And uh, yeah, in this view, you can see the last hour of measurements flowing in. And in this case, this is the voltage of your of your little yeah. uh, photovoltaic cells, right? And you can that also is. change the, the, the time frame of data, for example, to last minute. And um, yeah, in this case, we don't have too long time ranges yeah. present. We just connected it. It's uh, only today. Yeah. yeah, we have to be uh, a little more patient to, to display that. But um, yeah, let's also look at what else can be seen. For example, you have the uh, location tab on the left side, relatively at the bottom. There you can see where the device is currently located. You could also change that since your device isn't sending any um, yeah, location sensor data. It is a hard-coded information, so you can also edit this location if you wanted to. You can also, um, yeah, within the availability tab, see how uh, the availability in the past time frame was. Um, that is deduced by some alarms, some alarm ruling and uh, some more logic that can happen on Cumulosity. So let's look at uh, more analysis, what you can do with this data on Cumulosity. If you could navigate at the top right with the navigation menu entry uh, to the dash, uh, to the cockpit. 
and then we can look at the dashboard for the device in the group. I think we named it demo demo site. Yes, this is the group. So uh, here we can see the dashboard overview for the DA50 device and also on the group level we see the data flowing in for the last minute and also for the last hour as well as a alarm list and um, at the top at the bottom left we also have an info gorge and a map where we can see the the current values and um, the alarm that you see that was created the threshold exceeded alarm in the alarms list on the left side was created due to a smart rule that i have created in the smart rule, smart rule tab at the top um, in the tab there's a list of smart rules that can be created this is a create measurement uh, create alarm when measurements reaches explicit threshold alarm um, and i've configured that to create a alarm at the threshold of three volts so we could also insert different smart rules so at the top right if you have if you click on the add smart rule button there is a variety of options um, of different smart rules for example it could be a geofencing based alarms or sending emails sms anything really can be configured uh, depending on the measurements that are flowing in so all this logic builds up on top of the measurements that are being sent by the device and this is really where yeah cumulosity starts and um, since there are multiple and more options how to analyze the device if you close that um, little window and go click at the top right again to the application switcher menu you can see that there is, for example, streaming analytics, Aparma analytics builder. So everything that you want to do regarding data analytics can be done within these applications. And um, yeah, this is part of more different uh, learning materials. But this is where it all starts. And I think we've proven quite well that it's easy to connect a DA50 device or any flex edge device really with cumulosity iot and have the uh, required measurements on the platform and from there on start uh, really getting value out of this information uh, of course there are also different integrations with third-party solutions so it's not uh, a dead end so to say for data flowing in cumulosity you can forward it to erp systems ticket team systems um, there are very various options and um, this is where iot really starts uh, but it's the most crucial point to have the devices connected so thanks for the um, demonstration stefan and um, thank you Christian. Yeah, let's um, jump back to our normal call. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye. Bye Christian.